Southern Africa, home of many wild animals. Whether small or big, the young animals especially need human help. And when the young ones are strong enough, the animal rescuers help them to settle back into the wild. In this episode of Raising Wildlife, what does it take to hand rear a baby penguin? Can these two orphaned warthog siblings make it back into the wild? And this young caracal smells freedom, but what's the obstacle that's lying in its path? First, let's visit what's called the Friendly City. This is Port Elizabeth in South Africa. Here on the rocky coast, Bird Island Lighthouse stands guard, keeping ships at bay. Nearby, the South African Marine Rehabilitation and Education Centre cares for sick and injured seabirds. This is Wanda Marair. She's the animal manager here. Today, there are some new admissions at Samrek. One of these penguins needs her urgent attention. These are the two newest penguins that we got off Bird Island. Wanda surmises from its deep gashes that it's been bitten by a shark. This one was extremely thin. She was unbalanced. She couldn't stand up. You can always take a penguin behind the head so that you can control the beak. They are wild birds and they can bite. The number of African penguins have greatly diminished, so for Wanda, every penguin counts. So we take this penguin for uh, surgery. Hopefully he will recover soon. Wanda takes emergency cases like this one to a vet in Port Elizabeth. Morning, Wanda. What have you got today? It's a penguin that came off Bird Island and he's got deep wounds on his back and one on his lower abdomen. So I would like you to look at it okay. and see if it needs stitches. Okay, Swimming in the ocean, African penguins are in danger of falling prey to sharks, killer whales, or cape fur seals. Yeah, the one in the tail is really deep. This is clearly not a pleasant process for the penguin. Wanda's wondering if it stands a fighting chance of surviving its ordeal. Now, this is a deep wound. Yeah, we're going to have to close this as well. Next up is the Sondela Wildlife Center. Sondela means bring close. Here in the Limpopo province, African bushveld stretches as far as the eye can see. Here's Moira with one of her charges. This young caracal seems to be taking a keen interest in the water bowl. Hi, my name is Moira Cronier and I am currently at Sondela Wildlife Center located in Limpopo just outside of Bella Bella. Here we have Titan, our four-month-old baby caracal. And today we're going to be feeding him and showing you how we have trained him and how the process has come along to train him to get onto the table, walk on his leash, and just have a bit of a walkabout. Caracals have distinctive, large, tufted ears, like the mythological warriors that Titan is named after. These cats are fierce and agile, taking down prey larger than themselves and leaping three meters into the air to catch birds. Good boy. Good boy, Titan. So Titan over here was born in captivity. The reason for that is there was a male and female sex caracal in an enclosure. Sondela Wildlife Center does not aim to breed with species, but we do have the permits to cover us if it does happen. And that is what happened. That is why Titan was born in captivity. 
Farmers often shoot caracal, which belies their environmental importance. In the wild, the ecological importance, as they are pest control, they catch things like rats and small antelope, which means the, the population of herbivores are also obtained. Thank you, Buddha. Animals in captivity need stimulation. Titan really enjoys his daily walk. So this is where he takes us for a walk, not us him, due to an animal having their own behavior and do's and don'ts. We follow him and have him just explore the wildlife center. In the wild, a caracal would be on the prowl, protecting his territory in search of food, water, shelter, and keeping an eye open for a mate. Like other cats, Titan's sight and hearing is acute. Someone's approaching. This is Titan's old friend, Piggy. He grew up with this warthog, but now the relationship has changed. He thinks of Piggy more as a juicy meal than a companion. A rare coy moment for this high-spirited cat. Titan is so ready to take on life in the wild. What could it be that stands in the way of his release? Some other creatures at Sondela are more lucky. It's a big day for two tree squirrels. So what we will be doing now is called a soft release. These guys have been in this enclosure for a month's time from the clinic. And this get, gets them used to the elements, the, the climates around them, the different types of smells, animals, and just the overall movement. Raising wildlife is not always straightforward. When we return to Sondela, we'll find out more about a problem Titan has with his eyes. Now let's get back to Samrek a place dedicated to caring for sick and injured seabirds. And Wanda's dealing with an emergency. She's taken a badly injured penguin into a vet in Port Elizabeth. Has the operation been a success? The vet has closed some deep wounds. We're basically done. Probably within 20 minutes, he'll be wide awake. It's time to take our penguin home after the operation and stitches that's been done so that he can go and recover at some rig. Early the next day, there's no shortage of things for Wanda to do at Samrek, here next to the Indian Ocean. On her rounds, Wanda found an egg that had been pushed out of a nest. It was ice cold. The chances of the baby bird's survival were slim, but it lived to tell the tale. In the wild, penguin chicks eat regurgitated food from their mother's stomach. So Wanda prepares a mixture of fish mashed with water and she bolsters it with vitamins and minerals. I'm gonna take the baby out. Currently he's asleep, but you will hear his voice soon. I need to close it to keep the heat in. We're going to meet little baby Samarik today. I can hear him. He's extremely hungry already. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Hello, mini kiss. Ooh. Named after the center, Samrik is the first penguin chick to be hand reared here. Wanda's a dedicated surrogate mum. She feeds him every three hours during the day. Will he perhaps be the first hand reared penguin to be released back into the wild? Oh, and he enjoys his food so much. In about a month, Samrek will be eating very small sardines, and in two months, he'll be reintroduced to parents and other penguins. Out. I need to clean his little beak and his bum. Okay, okay, Nunez. What am I going to do? I'm taking him around his neck, lift up his little body, 
in his little beak, in his face. Breakfast, Mommy. Penguin chicks don't start out life waterproof, so they stay out of the water until they've got their proper plumage. He's all soft and fluffy, but in time, Samrek will be covered with small, stiff, densely packed feathers, which will be wind and waterproof. Comfort him a little bit so that he can calm down. I'm closing him up because he can get out of his basket. It's a very strong little baby. And then I'm going to put him back into the incubator. I never in my wildest dreams thought I will end up saving penguins. But today, I can tell you it's the most rewarding job I've ever, ever done in my whole life. Rescue is an important part of this rewarding job. Gannets have a razor-sharp beak, so special skill and patience are needed to capture birds that need help. Can Wanda get this bird in a box with all of her fingers intact? Now it's back to Sondela, where Moira works as a caretaker. Titan the Caracal finds refuge here, but his proper place is in the wild. Unfortunately, Titan has congenital cataracts that could endanger his survival. We can, however, fix it in operation. We are doing the research to make sure of the cost thereof and how we will be able to do that, which then means that Titan may be able to live a normal, happy life in the wild should that operation go successfully. Here we have our five month old tree squirrels. Uh, there are two of them in the enclosure at this stage. They came in as babies, which we had to syringe feed under the care of our clinic caretakers. From there, we had weaned them off of a yogurt mix with esbalac and also introduced fruit and nuts, which then makes the diet a little bit more versatile and also gets them used to different types of food, which they will then be introduced to in the wild as well. So what we will be doing now is called a soft release. These guys have been in this enclosure for a month's time from the clinic. And this get, gets them used to the elements, the, the climates around them, the different types of smells, animals, and just the overall movement. The big wide world awaits, and not a moment too soon. It's largely through its sense of smell that a squirrel experiences the environment. At last, he's smelling his first moments of freedom. All right, so this is the first time he's outside. Up until now, he was in enclosures, carrying enclosures with warm water bottles and blankets to keep him warm while he was still very young. And now he gets to explore the wildlife center, the different vegetation, the smells and all the animals. Always on the lookout for predators, it helps that a squirrel's eyes enable it to see what's happening behind it. So the reason why we close the enclosure afterwards is because we set available some food for them, which we'll do this afternoon as well, seeing as, the, as it's the first day that they're in the wild. This then just helps them to know that they can come back and find some food, yeah? Swift and acrobatic, squirrels use their tails for balance and for communication. The release went very well. They're enjoying the trees and the open spaces. They'll obviously be meeting some other squirrels and fend off for some territory as well. So it's good that they're nice and fat and big enough to fend for themselves. Coming up next, hand rearing an orphaned wild animal can come with some challenges. This baby Janet doesn't seem to quite get the plot. Will it or won't it? For this little creature, adjusting to a bottle isn't plain sailing. But now let's travel to another part of the Limpopo province. The Gita Matula Rehabilitation Wildlife Center also provides care to wild animals in distress. The African bush felt is abundant, but it's important to help those in need. This center began in a small way as the need for care arose. Cara de Brain, grew up on this farm and has always loved animals. What we do here is all wildlife rehabilitation. The animals come in, 
We uh, sort them out if they have injuries, if they're poisoned, if they've been in snares, or even if they've just been people's pets. I do what I do because I believe it's the most rewarding job in the world. I get to save animals that would otherwise land up dying, either in people's houses or on the side of the road, and actually put them back where they belong. A few months back, the owner of a farm nearby discovered two abandoned baby warthogs. They were very close to dying. The two little warthogs, Shatsi and Shalanti, when they came into the rehab, they couldn't find the mother, they were deteriorating in condition. Put them on the scales, weighed them, so that we could find out how much milk they need to get, how often. And from there, we tried to get them onto the bottle. It didn't work. Luckily, Kara could get the malnourished baby warthogs to feed from a bowl. And since then, they've picked up weight and made good progress. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm preparing the food for the two little warthogs that we have here. Today, there's a variety of foods on the menu for Shatsi and Shalanti. Kara feeds them some fruit to encourage their appetite, dog pellets add extra nutrition, and they also enjoy some grass. Right, here we are at our little baby warthogs. Let's go give them breakfast. Other's food is always better. Releasing wild animals is always the goal for Kara. Shotzi and Shalanti will be relatively easy to release back into the bush because they have remained wild at the center. Female warthogs naturally stick together, so the sisters will be able to support each other on release. And in the end, we'll take them off that kind of food completely, and it'll be all their natural food. Come, piggy, piggy, piggies. All right, so this is the piggy's afternoon feed. It's potato. <laughs> Not so interested. They're used to all the sweet stuff that we give them. When we first get them onto solids, they, um, they're on the sweeter stuff, apples and pawpaw, to get them used to chewing and get them used to the solids. Whereas this now is potato. It would be more like what they get in the wild. It's uncooked. And it's stocking their taste buds used to what they would get out there in the wild, digging up roots and, and all that, hey? But nice. Now the wilding up process, it takes a while. From here, they'll move to one of our bomas and uh, they'll stay there. We actually put a weak point in the, uh, in the fencing or in, in the boma, in the gate, and then they break out when they're ready to go. Wild warthog females stay with their mothers until they're ready to meet a mate. Generally takes about three to six months for a full, for a full soft release to be done. So yeah, are you trying to eat me? After release, Kara will put food and water out for them, but over time they will become independent. Back to Samrek on the southern coast of South Africa. Here at Bird Island, you'll find one of the largest colonies of Cape Gannet. The gannets breed on Bird Island, and this time of the year, it's time for the juvenile gannets to leave the island. But unfortunately, some of them are not strong enough to fight the strong winds that we've got in Algoa Bay. Wanda needs to approach the gannet carefully, as that sharp beak can do a lot of damage. This is a stranded gannet that needs to be rescued. And... Wanda makes this intervention as the gannet's wing is injured. You need to be very careful of the beak. It's like blades inside the beak. And always be careful, wear safety glasses when you work with a gannet that beak is very sharp and they've got long necks. If they stretch the neck, they can pick your eye out. 
So this little gannet is going into a box now and we're going to rescue him and we're going to take him to the ICU unit in, at Samrek. And always careful of the beak. Close the box, put the sights in. Hopefully this rescued gannet will be strong enough to take on the ocean winds again soon. Let's get back to Sondela Wildlife Centre in northern South Africa. We'll see that Sondela relies on the help of volunteers. It's important for animals to be exposed to different people and not to bond with one caregiver. The Janet is a cat-like creature found only in Africa. A baby Janet is called a kit. Between these two genets, uh, the unfortunate truth is that this baby came in with closed eyes, which means it's going to imprint on people feeding it in a certain manner, the food that we give it and the handling of the keepers. The six-week-old baby was raised by his mother up until six weeks, which means that he has built up instinct and has the immune system needed for a baby to be able to survive when he's older in the wild. The reason for them arriving at places like Sondela Wildlife Center is because people tend to find them in their yards where the mom was torn up by their dogs or on neighboring farms where they then harvest their crops and find the young ones afterwards. In the wild, Janets are nocturnal. They mostly live a solitary life and are shy and seldom seen. During the day, Janets sleep in caves, tree holes or burrows. So Melanie over here got him used to drinking from the actual bottle. So she's going to show us how she feeds. All right, so it's a process with any baby. Um, seeing the bit of a struggle. This baby doesn't exactly know what the reason is for this handling and, and for this synthetic teat. So he's still getting used to it. Uh, when he knows what it means, you'll know. He starts sucking immediately and they just go through a bottle like that. Patience is required when feeding this young Janet. Would you like me to hold him for you? He must get his nutrients or he won't survive. That's a relief. Finally, the kit enjoys the milk. But what goes in must also come out. So after feeding the baby, once again, you'll stimulate for bowel movements. This will happen up until seven weeks around about of age. The reason for that is uh, you won't have an exact age to say, especially in captivity, what happens is the baby will then st start to defecate and urinate on his own, which means you have to clean the enclosure every day to make sure that you're not overstimulating the baby, which could be harmful. At this stage, he's not doing it on his own yet. And by doing this, we can also control that they don't get constipated. Nearly done now. After this great breakfast adventure, this little Janet is probably pleased to get back to his cave where he can enjoy a quiet nap. In about 18 months when this Janet is released, he'll enjoy some fruit or perhaps a tasty rat. Back at Samrek on the coast, there's more jobs to be done at this rehabilitation centre. Samrik was specially designed for rehabilitating seabirds. In the event of an oil slick, this facility can accommodate up to 2,000 birds that need medical care. Wanda needs to feed these hungry gannets before she releases them. Over and beyond our penguins that we treat in the hospital, we do treat seabirds as well. We've got a few gannets right now in rehabilitation. Mature gannets lose their brown feathers and change dramatically in appearance. They eat at least five kilograms of fish per day. <laughs> a bit more effort is required to find a meal in the wild. 
gannets dive from considerable heights into the water in search of fish. Now it's time for what Wanda likes most about her job. We're going to take some of the juvenile gannets out of the uh, pool and we're going to bring it to the beach and release it. It's quite a bit easier getting a gannet out of a box than into one, and the world lies in wait. The Cape gannets are strong flyers and can be found up to 200 kilometers out to sea. Another satisfying day ends for those dedicated to raising wildlife. <laughs>